Hello, welcome to our second video on GIS. We're talking in this video series about what really is now a GIS revolution. We uh, spoke in the introduction about the various pieces which make up GIS today. Um, the web piece, the mobile piece, the desktop piece, and then the glue which fits everything together, which is the cloud. We're going to talk today about web GIS. On the screen you're looking at uh, just a quick slide which talks about the new approach really to developing web applications for GIS. Historically we used technologies like Flex and Silverlight and to a lesser degree JavaScript. Today it's very much about JavaScript. Today it's very much about building simple, intuitive and focused applications. So away from the Swiss Army knife uh, as we used to call them, of applications which tried to serve everybody's needs and were cluttered with many many tools. Let's just talk a little bit about what we're talking about there. So for simple applications, I've, I've chosen a, a local website here in uh, Salt Lake, sorry to uh, to pick on this one in particular, it's a Salt Lake County Assessors site. It's actually quite a good, app. it's a very useful uh, application this, but the reason I'm using this one as an example here is it is so filled with tools, it's so cluttered. It's got tools across the top here which allow you to do many different things, measurement tools and table of contents and any number of, any number of other different tools there. We've got the main window here which serves for very specific purposes but again it's filled with tools. We've got more here, we've got more in the top here and then more on the right. We've got a cluttered interface really which is filled with tools. Now to generalize, sometimes this actually works. Sometimes people just need all those tools. But a lot of the time, it's much better to build focused applications, applications which serve a particular specific need. People can get lost in these types of applications. Too many tools, too much clutter, we, we move away from them. So I don't mean to pick on this particular website, but because it is a useful website, but it is an example of how we used to build applications for GIS, web applications for GIS not so much now. So let's talk a little bit about what we mean by intuitive. Intuitive really means that a web application which makes sense. I pull it up in my browser, I look at it and it's obvious what I need to do. I don't need to read manuals, I don't need to go anywhere to find out about this. This is kind of an example of, of that. It's not cluttered with tools. It has very easy navigation elements on the left hand side. There's a search bar here and we've got a couple of tools here which pop out and are pretty obvious what you do with them. So we've got a, a pretty focused, intuitive application. Over here we can click on get a legend and we can see the table of contents as well. Um, so it's a, it's a nice simple application, it's just loading a web map. There's not massive amount going on here but it's for what I need there are specific tools for this particular requirement. Let's talk about focused as well. Now focus means it, it serves a particular purpose. It isn't for every man and their dog, it's for a particular use for a, by a particular user. So let's just look at a focused application. This one is an application we've launched actually in the marketplace, ArcGIS Marketplace, so I'll need to log into it. If I could type. It didn't teach us, teach us to type in order. Oh. And I get the wrong one. We'll get there. Amateur hour. Okay, so once we've logged in, we see an application which is, again, we've loaded a web map here. Um, and we've got two tools. We've essentially we've got one tool. We've got a help, a help page option here. We've got a single tool here. Now this, this application is actually designed to do uh, location analytics, so it's really a business focused application. It's for people that want to find out dynamically the demographics um, of a particular location, or along a corridor, or even by a, a polygon. So we're going to choose a, the default option here, which is a ring around a point with a radius of a mile. So we'll just click on the point, um, we'll click on a particular location. It's doing its calculations on the back end. It's uh, the actual geo enrichment service from Esri which is doing the calculations here. So we get a nice interface that comes up. We actually buffer and show what the area that we're talking about. And we can actually walk through this application and see dynamically the information that was provided. 
So we can click there and we can get information about how households by income. Um, we can get race and eth ethnicity. And there are a whole other, other slew of different uh, indicators and information in here. If we hide the carousel, there's actually the ability to report as well. So we can generate dynamic PDF. So a very simple application, very, very focused for a particular purpose. That's what we're talking about here. Okay, so that's the background. We really want to be building applications which are both simple, intuitive, and focused. Let's move on to the next piece. We're going to have a separate uh, video on mobile, but let's for, for this moment talk about web and mobile. I've used a term in here called responsive design, which is already getting a bit techy, maybe for some people, but I wanted to use that phrase because it's what, what is now used to be able to build applications which run across all devices. I think we've all had the experience where we pull up our iPhone or our Android phone and we see a web page which we can't read. It's impossible to work with. The navigation buttons are tiny. It isn't designed for mobile. Today we can build applications which are actually designed to run across all devices so they look good in a browser like this on a PC, but they also look good on, on phones and on tablets of various sizes. So they're designed to work on all of those devices. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to actually simulate what would be a, a mobile device here just by minimizing or shrinking down this uh, window. You see the interface as it stands now. As we move it smaller, you can see the interface actually changes. So let's, let's imagine this is a phone, which is, this has got a phone size. We've now lost the options across the header. But if we click here, we see we've still got them. So it's, re so it's restyled itself, this application, to be usable in, uh, on a phone uh, and, and on a tablet as well. So a, a really nice application. In fact, more often than not, and again, it obviously depends on, on your situation, but more often than not, you're going to want to build applications which run across devices. You want people to be able to access your application on all devices, given that we now live in a world where people are working out of the office they don't need to be on their PCs anymore so responsive design is well worth considering so what do we mean about the in the second point in multi-device workflows again if you're only building an application which is designed for a PC this may not apply but more often than we're building applications which we need to run across all devices as I've just said this is another responsive design application the workflows here are, are straightforward. They're not, they don't involve multiple steps. They don't involve complexity. They're simple. Again, we'll minimize this one and I'll just show you what we mean by that. Now, this is, when, when I minimize this, you'll actually see that uh, this application is uh, a can. Let's see if I can grab hold of a corner here. This actually, a, application actually styles itself differently to the last one. So there are different ways you can actually create a responsive design application. This one you'll notice has actually got the bottom, just like you'd see in a, in a, in a, on, a, on a phone. The options go to the bottom from the header. So let's just pull up this one. This is just basically changing the, the, the base maps. Now this is really simple. Simple thing you can do, we'll just click on there and we're good to go actually. We should have first clicked on a different one imagery. There we go. So, uh, so we've changed the base map, but my point in, this, in showing you this one is Obviously, there's other types of responsive design, which, which goes to point number one. But point number two, if you're going to have people using your web application on a mobile device, you need to make it simple. It's got to, it's got to flow simply. It can't be multiple menus and multiple buttons, and people get lost very quickly. So keep it simple. Again, a generalization, but if you're going to make an application which runs across all devices, it's got to be simple. Okay, that was our second point there. Let's step to the last one. So getting started, where do you get started when you want to build a web application that leverages the new technology for GIS? Well, there's really a number of ways one can do it. I've just listed three here. You can use customized templates. Esri have released a, a number, and not just Esri, but there's open source of the same. I'm going to reference a, an Esri one here, I believe. Um, this is a simple uh, template that the local government uh, group within Esri have released. And they've done a lot. There's an amazing number of templates they've got. These are relatively simple to configure, so if you're a local uh, entity that needs a park finder, in this case, um, you can customize this for your own particular need. This is for Cottonwood Heights, the city of Cottonwood Heights, where we're based, and we've customized this template from Esri quite simply. We haven't done any coding here, we've just customized it, so we've set up the data on the back end, um, and then we've customized the interface. So this is a very simple way to get something up and running without you needing to know development particularly. So this application is a like I say, 
you can do a search there's a local park here let's look for that park East Banbury Road we'll click on one of those options it came back with two options there we'll click on it and there it is it zooms to the map it shows how to get from your location to the, the actual park and it gives a lot of information across the bottom about that part. So a very cool application. From your perspective, you just need to configure it and set up the data. Again, this is an ArcGIS Online application, but you can do that quite simply. So that's one place to start, is to look at customized templates. Second one, build your own. So development for non-developers. What does that mean? What I'm going to do here is show you, it, I believe it's in beta, um, is the new builder from Esri. You can actually build applications inside of this. I'm just going to, I'm not going to show you how to build it, but what I'm going to do is just uh, launch the application. So we built this inside of Builder. It's a pretty simple application. Again, very focused. Um, again, what we've got here is a web map in the background. And I've spoken about it earlier. We've got particular tools here that we can use. But this was all done within Builder. We didn't have to do any coding here. Now you can build widgets to add to this application but this is out of the box these are widgets that come with it over time my guess is that this will replace um, the flex viewer this is over the long period because everyone's still using the lots of people are still using the flex viewer but I suspect that this will be an approach that people will start to use to build widgets to download widgets to then start using um, an application here which is again it's responsive this will work across devices and then of course the last option is to use a development company. Now WebMap Solutions is a development company. We build, we customize templates, we'll, uh, we'll set up the data for you, we'll, um, we'll use Builder and we'll build widgets for you if that's what you need. But most importantly we build custom applications that are just for your requirements. So is, if you've got a specific requirement um, and no, none of the other options that, that you've seen there work for you then you can turn to a company like us who can uh, help you build those applications and we have a, a number of developers we have a whole team of developers that will build applications for you I, I bring up this page because I wanted to point you at this top right hand corner it says mobile GIS guide um, it's actually wider than that there's web there's web discussion in there as well but that guide it's a free guide it should help you get started on doing um, on getting a project going whether it be a mobile project a web project or both so if you're interested feel free to download the guide um, and it will give you sort of a jump start on the projects that, that uh, you're trying to do. Thanks for watching.